chocolate, avocados, coffee. Delicious and near extinction due to climate change. Take cacao. It only grows in a narrow band around the equator. Increasingly unpredictable weather there has led experts to predict a significant decrease in cocoa production by 2030. But it's not just delicacies that need the right balance of temperature, rain, and soil. Staple crops like wheat, rice, and maize are already feeling the impacts. So how can we strengthen and protect our food supply? There are over 20,000 edible plant species, but nearly half of our daily calories come from just three staple crops, wheat, rice, and maize. An each degree Celsius increase in global mean temperature could reduce global yields significantly. So the two primary drivers of crop productivity anywhere around the world is wetness and warmth. That's Deepak Ray, and he's a senior scientist in global landscapes at the University of Minnesota. His research on food security has been crucial in observing the current effects climate change has on crops. In our study, which is a long-term observation of trying to uh, figure out how climate change impacts individual crops, wheat yields have already been seen to reduce. Our agricultural economy and food systems are intrinsically connected to everything that we do. And so the work that we do is lifting up the good things that are happening in our local communities so that we can advance federal policy to support the kinds of things that we want to see happen to, to stop climate change. That's Cassa Heron. She has over 20 years of experience working at the intersections of community and economic development, specifically within food systems. And right now we have a food system that is consolidated, that is run on monopolies and profits that cause us to overuse our natural resources. So we're depleting the good things in our soil. We're all being affected in a negative way by a food system that's based on profits and not on feeding us. The USDA reports that over 33 million people in the United States are currently experiencing food insecurity, including 5 million children. So what's our role in this? How can we protect the foods we want and the foods we need? We need collective action. We need people of all walks of life to be active in changing how our food system operates in, in our country. And we need leaders to reflect the diversity of the kinds of food that we want to eat and have access to. That's why many frontline communities are calling for government action. This can mean a few things, like incentivizing regenerative agriculture to improve farming productivity, investing in local food systems to decrease the environmental impact of food transportation, and increasing access to healthy food to combat food deserts. The reason why I am researching this topic for the last 10 plus years is because the difference between enough food production and not having enough food production is whether we will have continue to have our modern civilization the way it is or not. The principles of the Green New Deal center people who are most affected by climate change to be the drivers and the innovators of that change. The Green New Deal is a proposed set of policy initiatives that address the urgent challenges of climate change, economic inequality, and social injustice. It's important that we talk to our neighbors about the kind of changes that we want to see in our community. It's important that we know who our local, state, and federal elected officials are. We should call them, we should visit them, and we should definitely let them know what kinds of investments we want them to make in order for us to change the climate crisis that is affecting us. To ensure the preservation of our cherished foods and our staple crops for future generations, it is imperative that we actively participate through community involvement, collective action, and by voting. By working together to demand more from our government, we can collectively create a sustainable future that will benefit everyone. <laughs>